Hey, what's up? Uh, that's Tel Aviv in the background there, but I'm in the city of Jaffa, which is the ancient city of Joppa. Joppa is the place in the Old Testament where when they needed to bring wood down from Lebanon, they would, uh, they would float it uh, down to Joppa and then uh, haul it over land to Jerusalem. Um, it's also the city where, uh, where Jonah fled in order to catch a ship to get away from what the Lord was telling him to do. And in the New Testament, it's important because uh, Peter was in a nearby town called Leda when there was uh, a paralyzed man. Peter here uh, healed the paralyzed man. And then when a woman died named Tabitha in Joppa, uh, the Christians here heard that Peter was nearby. They went, brought him here, uh, and Peter raised her from the dead. Then Peter uh, stayed here with Simon the Tanner, and eventually Cornelius sent some soldiers to get, to get Peter and bring him back to uh, Caesarea, and there you have the beginning of the conversion of the Gentiles. All right, as I pointed out, I'm in the city of Joppa. And I hear dueling muezzins. I don't know if you can hear, but I got a muezzin over here and a muezzin over there. Muezzins everywhere. We're not here touring Jaffa. This is just our last night here in Israel, and we stopped here for dinner before heading to the airport. But, really cool looking place. Yo, just got back from Israel, I'm at JFK now, had an overnight flight have to get home, take a shower, and head to surgery for this little guy here, a little skin cancer. So I'll probably post a little commentary uh, after that along with this, and uh, then I'm probably going to sleep for about 20 hours or so. Hey, what's up? Took off from Israel last night. I landed in New York this morning. I got home this afternoon. I had a doctor's appointment at 3 o'clock. I thought the appointment was for surgery. Turns out it was just to explain the surgery to me. Not sure why I needed a doctor to explain how he's going to cut some cancer out of my face, but it goes like this. I go in for surgery on November 15th, and it's going to take somewhere between two and four hours. That sounds like a long time for a tiny spot, but here's how it works. The doctor is going to cut around the spot that's obviously cancerous and remove it. Then he's going to send what he cut out to the lab. They're going to check for cancer cells and normal cells. Then he's going to cut out more and send that to the lab, again checking for cancer cells and normal cells. He's going to keep cutting out more until the lab says that he's only cutting out normal cells. That's when he knows he got all of the cancer. Pretty straightforward. Now, back to my trip to Israel. Awesome time. My trip was paid for by an organization that sends Christian speakers and writers and apologists to Israel so that we know what we're talking about when we talk about Israel. So my trip was covered, didn't cost me anything, but here's what's even cooler. I did a fundraiser back in July for a medical conference for two of my sons and people gave me a bunch of extra money. The first thing I did with the extra money was buy my wife a ticket so she could go with me. And we've never done anything like this. Since our son Reed was born with a disability in 2007, we almost never go out of town together. Either I travel while she stays home or she travels while I stay home. We've only gone out of town together a few times in the past 12 years and only for two or three days at a time. Leaving for nine days was pretty intense. Marie set it up so that there was a nurse here most of the time, and her parents and my mom were here with our five boys. Our tour of Israel was epic. I was with Mike Lacona, Paul Copan, Greg Kokel, Nancy Piercy, Tim Stratton, Bobby Conway, Craig Hazen, Brett Kunkel, Sean McDowell, Doug Powell, John Lovell, Chad Williams, and some others. 
We met with Muslims, we met with Christians, we met with Jews, we met with Palestinians, we met with Israelis, we met with officers from the Israeli Defense Forces, we met with a former advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu. We got a ton of information from the people we met with, and we learned a lot about the places we visited. Our tour guide, Yoav, was awesome. He stays up to date on the latest archaeological research, and he was blowing our minds when he was telling us about the sites we were at. Eventually, I'd like to comment on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I now understand it a lot more after meeting with people on different sides of the conflict, but I want to study it a bit more. First, I was given some books. Once I go through those, I'll give you my thoughts. I will point out two things that stood out to me. First, in terms of its natural features, Israel doesn't seem like it should be such an important place. In other words, it's not very big. The entire country is about the size of New Jersey. Its main natural resource is limestone. For half the year, it's one big desert. It has one good lake, the Sea of Galilee. Its biggest body of water, the Dead Sea, is almost useless, although they do put it to some good use. It's got one real river, the Jordan. And where I come from, we wouldn't even call it a river. We'd call it a creek. Well, in West Virginia, we'd call it a creek. The Jordan River is way smaller than you think it is if you haven't seen it. So, there isn't much that's amazing or spectacular about the land, and yet it's one of the most important places on Earth. That's interesting. Second, Israel works remarkably well, given everything that could go wrong. I'm not saying it's a utopia. I'm not saying that Israel has done everything right. I'm not saying that there aren't huge problems in need of solutions. Let me try to explain what I mean. I'll give you an example. I went to an area of Jerusalem that was almost completely Muslim. The call to prayer was blasting over multiple loudspeakers. The women were all dressed in Islamic garb. And I saw two Christian street preachers preaching the gospel right in the middle of that area. That's pretty amazing. A third of the population of Jerusalem is Muslim. Almost two-thirds is Jewish. Christians make up around 2% of the population. Given the demographics and the history of the area, things could be much, much worse. There are Christian holy sites right in the middle of Muslim areas. There's a mosque on the Temple Mount. How is this not a total bloodbath? Yes, there's some underlying tension, but not nearly as much as you would expect. So, while there are Christians in Israel and the Palestinian territories who are concerned about their community, and Muslims in Israel and the Palestinian territories who are concerned about their community, and Jews who are concerned about their community, Israel is getting a lot of things right. If you ever get a chance to take a trip to Israel, I would highly recommend it. I think I'd like to take about three more trips to the region in the coming years. I'd like to spend another week or so in Jerusalem, learning the layout of the city a bit more and visiting some of the places I didn't get to see. I'd like to spend about a week in Galilee, a lot of that in a boat, trying to trace some of the narratives in the gospel. And one of the Palestinian Christians I met said he could take me around the Palestinian territories, so I can hear from the people there. Lots of Palestinian Christians feel like they've been abandoned by Christians worldwide, but I'd be happy to share what they have to say. All right, that sums up the trip. I do have a few more related videos to share, but for now, I'm going to sleep for a long, long time. I'll close out with a clip I recorded in a Druze village, but didn't include in any of my videos. The Druze are a heretical offshoot of Islam, but for whatever reason, they make the best falafel. So here's D. Wood's brief introduction to falafel. All right, welcome to Falafel 101. The Druze are famous for being the best falafel makers in the world. Now, falafel experts know that good falafel is supposed to be green in the middle. If it's brown, 
Your falafel was made by an amateur and throw it in the garbage. And oh, look at that. That is what you're supposed to see when you crack open your falafel, ladies and gentlemen.